cansancio. Hay como una extensión hacia atrás sí. en, en el movimiento antinatural. Did you see the video? It was horrible spot injury sustained by Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Now I will give an overview what possible injuries he may have over the affected area, especially the knee area. Okay. Now I'm going to talk about the knee anatomy. This is a right knee model. Knee joint formed by two bones, femur bone and tibia bone, as well as this bone is called fibula. There are four main ligaments that stabilize the knee joint. The inner side we call MCL, medial collateral ligament, and the outer side we call lateral collateral ligament. This is to resist the forces, these bending forces. We call coronal forces, bending side, okay? And inside the knee joint, there's a two ligaments over the front part. We call ACL, anterior ligament, and then at the back, PCL, posterior cruciate ligament. This ligament, especially ACL, prevent the anterior or forward translation of the knee joint, whereas the PCL resists the forces from translating backward of the knee joint. And inside the knee joint, there is a two structures called meniscus, medial meniscus and lateral meniscus. Meniscus function is to absorb the forces transmitted across the knee joint. And this is a small bone we call patella bone, which is situated inside the quadriceps and patella tendon. Don't forget, at the back of the knee structures, there is big vessels, we call popliteal vessels, located behind the knee. These vessels also can be potential to be injured during this mechanism of injury sustained by Zlatan based on the video just now. This structure should be monitored by the doctor. Based on the explanation just now, there are three main areas to summarize the anatomy. The bone, ligament, meniscus as well as the joint. Any of this structure can be injured during sports injury. So the role of the doctor is to determine which structures injured via examination and then supported by MRI findings. Then the doctor will arrive into appropriate treatment. Thank you. Meniscus injury. What is the meniscus? As I mentioned earlier in the previous video, the meniscus are the shock absorber of the knee joint. There are two meniscus. On the inner part, it is called medial meniscus and then the outer part of the knee, it is called lateral meniscus. So, meniscus can be injured during sports activity or during trauma or accident. What are the symptoms of meniscus injury? Most common symptom is pain. Pain during walking or twisting motion or twisting activity. It also associated with mild or moderate swelling over the knee and the worst part or the severe part of the injured meniscus, it is called locking knee. Okay, what is locking knee? Locking knee means a person unable to fully straighten the knee joint. Most of the patient will come to the doctor, they explain, Doctor, I cannot extend or straighten my knee. So, this is the common complaint that the patient will have during the encounter with doctors. So, this is locking knee. Okay, next, what does locking knee mean to a doctor? Most of the doctors or orthopedic surgeon, if they find or encounter a patient with locking knee, they will suspect a bucket handle meniscus tear. What is bucket handle meniscus tear? You can see the photo above, bucket handle. Bucket handle can be displaced or non-displaced. The displaced bucket handle will cause locking knee where the meniscus, some of the portion of the meniscus will flip inside the knee joint. When it's flipped inside the knee joint, it will cause locking. For example, this is the meniscus. If it is flipped inside the knee joint and patient unable to extend the knee. This is what we call bucket handle meniscus injury. Okay, next. What are the treatment of meniscus injury? Most of the patient will complain to the doctor and the doctor will do examination and MRI. Based on MRI, the doctor will suggest for surgery. We have to repair meniscus. Why? If you don't repair the meniscus, a patient will lose the shock observer of the knee. If they 
loss the shock absorber, the knee will subjected to a increased stress of the knee joint. This will lead to degenerative process and lead to osteoarthritis or in the other term secondary osteoarthritis so nowadays because the advancement of the technology in treating the meniscus most of the procedure is done via arthroscopic you can see the video this is how we repair the meniscus this is called all inside technique you don't need to know but the surgeon will propose most of the surgeon will propose all inside meniscus repair but the surgeon will discuss further to you on the treatment of the meniscus. In summary, most of the meniscus surgery or meniscus repair surgery will be done via arthroscopic method or keyhole surgery. Next, after the repair, what I should do, doctor? Most of the patient who undergone meniscus repair will subjected to a certain period of non-weight bearing or the other term, they will undergo non-weight bearing walking or non-weight bearing ambulation with the aid of crutches. How long it take? It will take normally about six weeks. After the procedure, the doctor will review you for the wound assessment. Once the wound healing, you will be undergone physiotherapy or rehabilitation for six months duration sometimes it may lead to nine months of physiotherapy the physiotherapy will focus on knee rehabilitation to get the full range of motion followed by muscle strengthening and then coordination some patient will ask doctor when i able to perform squat a patient underwent meniscus injury they cannot squat for at least six months this is to avoid interference of the repair site so some patient will ask when can i return to sports doctor normally a patient with meniscus injury they are able to return to sports as early as nine months and then average patient they will return to sport at one year provided they must undergo for optimal physiotherapy okay I'm going to talk about anterior cruciate ligament or ACL injury. What is ACL? ACL is a ligament inside our knee which is situated at the front part of the knee. It is to prevent anterior or forward translation of the tibia bone in relation to the femur bone. This is to prevent anterior translation. Okay, it can be injured in contact spots and most common in rugby, football or non-contact spots. What are the symptoms of ACL injury? Immediate injury, it will cause acute swelling over the knee joint. And chronic symptoms or in a patient with chronic injury, the symptoms will be feeling of unstable of the knee joint during sports activity. The acute treatment of any sports related injury, especially ACL, will be price. Remember, price. Protect the area via putting a split. Rest. Rest from any sport activity, but maintain a normal walking as tolerated by the patient. I is ice therapy. C is compression by putting a bandage. And E, elevate of the injured area. I recall again, price. How to diagnose the ACL injury? It can be diagnosed by the doctor via physical examination and also MRI. Of course, X-ray to look if there any avulsion fracture of the ACL ligament. If there is no avulsion fracture, the doctor will continue with MRI of the knee scan because they want to assess the meniscus integrity and as well as the ACL integrity and other structures of the knee joint. How to treat the ACL injury? First, if the ACL rupture, the doctor will assess if any other structure is injured for example if the patient have a ACL injury in combination with the MCL injury or LCL injury or meniscus injury yes the treatment will be ACL reconstruction the next scenario is isolated ACL injury or pure ACL injury in a patient who is not athletes then the doctor will assess whether he or she involved in jumping activities sports like basketball football and the occupation involved in heavy lifting and frequent ascending or descending staircase and some patient the hobby is skiing then then this group of patients, we suggest to undergo SEL reconstruction. And the third scenario is isolated SEL injury in a patient who is not active or involved in sedentary lifestyle. And this group of patients can be considered to trial of conservative management or non-operative management via physiotherapy and rehabilitation program. 
focus on the surrounding muscles of the knee strengthening especially the hamstring muscle most of the SCL reconstruction surgery is done via arthroscopic technique and to reconstruct SCL you need to get a graph there are three main group which is autograph autograph means we get a specimen or tissue from the patient body and then reconstruct using this specimen allograph means we get from a cadaver or dead bodies the third one is synthetic which is not by a human tissues it is created by a tissue engineering technology most common autograph used by orthopedic surgeon autograph means we use the patient tissue to reconstruct the SEL number one bone patella bone graph Number two, hamstring tendon graph. Number three, quadriceps tendon graph. Okay. SCL surgery involved in creation of tunnel. There will be a tunnel created over the tibia and also over the femur as illustrated by the figure. The ligament will be passed through the tunnel and then fixed. There are two types of fixation either via endo button over the femoral side and endo button over the tibia side another type of fixation is endo button over the femur side and screw over the tibia this type of surgery or technique of surgery depends on the surgeon preference and their training of course most of the surgery technique will be discussed to the patient and the advantages and disadvantages will be discussed by the surgeon how long i will be able to return to sports doctor before i answer this question most of the patient will undergo a rehabilitation what are the rehabilitation involved doctor rehabilitation after scl surgery involves a few phases phase one swelling reduction and pain management phase two muscle strengthening phase three coordination training and the next phase will be sport specific training this rehabilitation program will last about nine months until one year Thank you. Pada segmen kali ini, saya akan menjawab Ijul kecil bertanya berkenaan rawatan tulang belakang dan tanda-tanda penyakit tulang belakang. The function of spine is to provide support to the human body. It is serve and axis to stabilize the human body in terms of balance. Other than that, the spine function is to protect the nerve inside the spine. And also the spine function to provide muscle attachment or limb attachment to the human body. And the next function is for well-being of the human body or for red blood cell production which is called hematopoiesis process. The other function of spine is for calcium calcium metabolism which is if it's deranged it will lead to osteoporosis in general the spinal column or we call vertebral column can be divided into multiple area upper part cervical second part is thoracic lower part lumbar and the lowest part is sacrum and coccyx cervical spine have seven vertebra thoracic have 12 lumbar have five sacrum has five and also coccyx have four or five fused vertebra. As you can see in front of me, this is a spine model. This is a true imprinted 3D spine model of human anatomy for lumbar area or lower back area. Okay, and I want to show you this is a vertebra body or bone. The white color is the bone or vertebra body. In between the vertebra body, there is a structure called this. The disc contains two parts, annulus and also nucleus pulposus. The nucleus pulposus contains gelatinous material. It's a soft and delicate structure in our body. It serves as a shock absorber. The annulus is a ligament to reinforce the disc. It is to prevent the occurrence of slip disc. At the back here, there's a joint. At the back of the spine, there's a joint. You can see the joint. This is what we call facet joint. Inflammation of the facet joint can lead to pain also. And there will be a muscle over the back of the spine. This muscle serves as a anchor of the spine to maintain the posture of the patient. What we call paravertebral muscle. And you can see the next structure which is the yellow color is the nerve. Any problem with the spine, for example, fracture of the spine and the bone piece goes at the back, it will hit the nerve and the patient will have a pain, shooting pain down to the leg, lead to probably paralysis. Slip this, you can see at the back here. 
This is the model of the slip disc. If it is slip out and pressing on the nerve, you will have a condition called sciatica. Okay, next. As you can see, there are so many causes of back pain. It can be muscle pain, spasm of the muscle, or sprain of the muscle. It also can be a slip disc, or the other term called prolapse intervertebral disc. The third cause will be degenerative disc disease. Next, spinal stenosis, or the other term is nerve compressive disorder. And the most sinister problem are, number one, we have to identify malignancy, fractures, infection, and tuberculosis. How do we differentiate the causes of neck pain and back pain? Back on the patient complaint. Now I want to bring the term called red flags. So normally the doctor will ask history and followed by physical examination. Number one, why we need to know the red flag sign? Because we can differentiate whether the back pain or the neck pain caused by malignancy, fractures, infection, or tuberculosis. The doctor will ask the patient if he or she has a previous malignancy, for example, lung cancer or breast cancer, and the patient have a neck pain and back pain associated with an unexplained weight loss or loss of Appetite, recent fever with chills, regus, if the patient have a diabetes mellitus or immunosuppression status or with a previous chronic disease, for example, chronic renal failure or autoimmune disease on steroids, or if the pain occur all the time, especially during nighttime or during the race, or recently whether the patient have a fall or if the patient have a problem with urination or bowel dysfunction. Then the doctor will do physical examination. The doctor will assess the power of the lower limb the sensation of the limbs they will check the anal tone or what does it mean the doctor will put his finger into the patient anus to assess the sensation perianal sensation and also to assess the contraction or anal tone whether there's a laxity if presence of this red flex then the doctor may suspect malignancy, fractures, infection, or tuberculosis. What will the doctor do next? The doctor will do investigation, blood investigation to look for the infection parameters, to look for tumor markers, and specific studies related to specific problems. Next, he or she will order x-rays and MRI of the spines to confirm the diagnosis. Again, remember, there are so many types of neck pain and back pain, but you must recognize sinister problem by remember and identifying the red flags of back pain or neck pain. Thank you. There are three main causes of back problem with leg pain. Number one, spinal stenosis, which cause the narrowing of spinal canal and lead to compression of the nerve or neural elements. Number two, disc herniation, which is protrusion of the disc lead to compression of the neural element, whether the central or lateral or we call outer part. Number three, annular tear. So, in summary, spinal stenosis, this herniation and annular tear will lead to back problem with leg symptoms, which is called sciatica. This prolapse or slip disc. As I mentioned in the last video, slip disc can cause leg pain, which is called sciatica. So, how do we treat this prolapse? Before we treat, the doctor will confirm the diagnosis by performing MRI scan. He will assess whether you have a disc bulge, disc protrusion, disc extrusion, and also sequestrated disc. And also, the doctor may look if any evidence of annular tear. And the treatment will always start with pain management which is start with oral medication. Oral medication can be divided into a few areas. First one, NSAIDs, which is non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as Celebrex, Acoxia, Diclofenac. The other medication will be a, we call neuropathic drugs such as Gabapentin or Brigabalin. And some doctors may give you a B-complex. In the other terms is nerve vitamins which help the nerve to heal. For example, Mycobalamin, Neurobion. Again, then the doctor will always start with oral analgesia and they will send you for physiotherapy which focus on pain management, posture control and basically to improve your ergonomics. How long this patient will be on non-operative treatment? Most of the doctor will observe you for about 6 weeks to 3 months. If this treatment regime fail, then they may suggest for injection. Injection could be epidural steroid injection or transforamina steroid injection and the doctor 
doctor will observe you closely and if the condition still persists they may offer you operation which is decompression and removal of the disc in medical term laminotomy and discectomy what is it this process involves make a small hole over the spine and then push or retract the neural element or nerve and then remove the disc the idea is to relieve the compression over the nerve traditionally this operation there will be a wound standard wound should be around 3 cm to 5 cm wound over the back and as the technology advances then there will be smaller wound due to the improvement of technique of surgery next level of the minimal invasive treatment will be endoscopic spine surgery which the average wound will be around less than 1 cm wound it involves placing a instrument guided by endoscopic camera and then again it still involves make a small hole which is called laminotomy and then it's the same procedure with the traditional after laminotomy involves retraction of the neural element and then removal of the disc the advantages of endoscopic surgery small wound less bleeding less trauma or less tissue injury and then faster rehabilitation i'm going to share the video regarding endoscopic discectomy Thank you. What is knee osteoarthritis? Knee osteoarthritis is a condition or degenerative condition of the knee which is characterized by thinning of the joint surface. For example, you can see over this model, thinning of the joint surface and lead to expose of the bone or we call exposed subchondral bone subchondral cyst there will be a cyst below the joint surface and also you can have a bone spur you can see this is a bone spur over the knee joint then what are the symptoms of the knee osteoarthritis number one there will be a pain over the knee joint and it is described as a mechanical pain the pain occur during prolonged walking second symptom the patient experience stiffness during or after a prolonged rest this is because of the joint capsule of the knee is contracted the third symptom will be grating sensation or the patient will describe to the doctor he or she has a cracking sound or grating feeling over the knee joint the last symptom will be swelling
What are the risk factors of the knee osteoarthritis? Number one, older age. Most common occur at the older age. Number two, obesity. Obesity will predispose a person to have a knee joint osteoarthritis because the body or the load transfer across the knee joint is higher compared to normal people. It can be due to other problems such as injuries, such as ACL tear, which is lead instability to the knee joint and increased joint forces across the knee joint. It can be due to meniscus tear, which lead to loss of shock absorber of the knee joint and lead to increased stress over the knee joint and lead to joint surface degradation or thinning of the joint surface and very rare causes certain metabolic diseases such as gout and a person with too much iron in the body which is hemochromatosis also predispose them to have knee osteoarthritis genetics patient who were born with skeletal or knee deformities or congenital condition with a bowing knee joint in this particular patient there will be abnormal transfer of the load across the lower limb which is increase the stress over the knee joint and last genetics some patient inherit a tendency to develop knee osteoarthritis next how a doctor or orthopedic surgeon diagnose a person with knee osteoarthritis normally the doctor will perform physical examination they will identify if there is a deformity or we call genovirus or genovalgus over the knee joint then they will elicit tenderness across the knee joint and they will identify if there is a swelling of the knee joint and then doctor will assess whether the range of motion of the patient is limited or within normal range then the doctor will order an x-ray the doctor will look at evidence of knee osteoarthritis there will be a narrowing of the joint space bone spur and subchondrosis an x-ray normally the doctor will grade the knee osteoarthritis it can be grade 1 grade 2 grade 3 or grade 4 it means grade 1 is the least serious and grade 4 is the end stage knee osteoarthritis MRI is not necessary or if the doctor suspect the patient have a knee osteoarthritis they will only embark if they suspect the problem not due to the knee osteoarthritis probably due to the degenerative meniscus tear or other problem next the doctor will do a blood test if they suspect the knee osteoarthritis due to other problems such as autoimmune disease they will order investigation to check the autoimmune marker next they will send to look for high in uric acid or hyperuricemia to look for any evidence if the patient have a gout problem and some doctor if the effusion or the knee joint swelling is too large they will do aspiration or remove the fluid from the knee joint to look at the condition of the fluid and then they will send for a further analysis especially to look if presence of infections or presence of gout crystal then we move to the treatment remember knee osteoarthritis is non-reversible disease it means if the patient have advanced osteoarthritis we cannot as a doctor reverse the condition to the original knee condition treatment modalities can be divided into three main group group one medications group two physical therapy and group three surgical or other procedures Medication, it can be divided into analgesia or painkiller. There are many types of painkiller, most common paracetamol and NSAIDs. We call non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as ibuprofen, diclofenac, naproxen, acoxia, and celebrex. Remember, analgesia, especially NSAIDs, is for short term, not for long term because it can give rise to gastric problem or peptic alter disease as well as it may have side effects to the kidney. Other types of medication will be joint supplements. It could be glucosamine, it could be atroda, it could be piascridine, it could be mobitron. There are many sorts of joint supplement. But again, for me, to take home message for you all, joint supplement, normally it works for grade 1 and grade 2. Unlikely, it will have a major or significant effect to grade 3 knee osteoarthritis, more so grade 4. Remember, the joint supplement only for early stage of the knee osteoarthritis and the recommended duration will be 3 to 6 months. The next treatment model is the doctor will refer the patient to physical therapies or physiotherapies this is for pain management muscle relaxation joint stretching to relieve the joint stiffness and then some modalities they will give you such as ultrasound therapy and TENS TENS therapy to relieve 
the pain. Again, all sorts of treatments fall in the category of physical therapies or physical therapies is to reduce the symptoms. It does not change the natural history of the disease. Again, physiotherapy activity will never reduce grade 3 or grade 4 osteoarthritis to grade 1. This is serve for pain management to relieve the pain so that the patient will have a better quality of life. Some doctor may prescribe you a knee brace or foot insole but must remember these modalities is only will produce best result if the deformity is flexible if the doctor able to correct from the bowing knee to straighten knee then the knee brace or the foot insole will be able to help the patient because by straightening or correcting the alignment of the lower limb it will transfer the load of the body to more balance across the knee joint so the patient may have a reduction of symptoms however this method is not popular in malaysia or in our climate because most of us who stay in this region we will sweat if you put brace or insole inside our body you will sweat and it will produce blister difference in europe their country is not as hot in our region okay Next, we move to the third group of the treatment, knee osteoarthritis, which is surgery. Surgery can be divided into arthroscopic debridement, means we put scope inside the knee joint and debride the inflamed synovian. Normally, we don't do this procedure as a standard procedure unless you suspect the pain due to the degenerative meniscus tear. And then we go inside, look at the meniscus and remove the meniscus. This will improve the patient's symptoms. Or some patient, based on my experience, when we put scope inside the knee joint, we can see a foreign body or loose body which is originated from the bone spur or fracture, detach and goes inside the knee joint. It will produce symptoms, which is pain for the patient. But this this condition is very rare. I only see one patient have this problem in my practice. Next treatment will be injections. Or have you heard about viscose supplement injection or hyaluronic acid injection? The purpose of injection is to relieve the pain by improved lubrication across the knee joint. And by improving the pain score, the patient will feel better and there will be less indication or less consumption of painkiller. Hence, to reduce the side effects of the painkiller. This is the function of the viscose supplement. I take home message for you all if you need injection kindly get a high molecular weight injection over the knee joint and this cost supplement injection normally it will do better in a grade 2 or grade 3 knee osteoarthritis for grade 4 it is unlikely to give a significant result some patient ask me about prp or platelet rich plasma platelet rich plasma is a treatment where you draw a blood from the human body spin within 10 minutes and get the platelet rich plasma platelet rich plasma contain high concentration of growth factor for tissue healing. Normally, for knee joint, there is no conclusive evidence this PRP will do better or to improve the cartilage condition. I repeat, at the moment, based on current evidence, PRP is inconclusive for the treatment of knee osteoarthritis. Normally, we use PRP for a localized small cartilage defect to stimulate their cartilage regeneration. However, for knee osteoarthritis, has a limited indication. And at the moment, the indication is case-to-case -case basis. So you may have to discuss with your doctor regarding to receive PRP injection. If the person have a grade 3 knee osteoarthritis or almost grade 4 in a young patient 54 years old, we give option of knee osteotomy or surgical we call realignment osteotomy. This is to correct the alignment by performing osteotomy of the bone, cut the bone, correct the alignment and then put a plate. By correcting the alignment, the patient will have a better axis and will have a reduction of pain. And after that, the patient will be follow up periodically at certain interval to look for evidence of deteriorating of the knee joint. If the condition become worse, then we may embark on knee total replacement at the age of 60 years old. Joint replacement can be either unicompartmental or totally replacement. This treatment is safe, minimal complication, and it is a common procedure in Malaysia today. Total knee arthroplasty, the main aim is to replace the worn cartilage by providing reduction in pain score, improve quality of life, and improve function, and correct the deformity. As I mentioned earlier, knee joint osteoarthritis some patient may have a bone knee due to the genovirus by performing arthroplasty it has ability to correct the deformity again arthroplasty can improve the pain
pen or relieve the pen, improve the alignment or correct the deformity and improve activity daily living or function of the patient. And of course, there are complications related to the procedure. However, complication is minimal. Complication are infections, which is 1 to 2 percent. Ligament injuries is 0 0.5 percent. Deep vein thrombosis to 3 percent. Neurovascular injury or cut the popliteal artery or common peroneal nerve. But this is very rare, which is 0.05 percent. Iatrogenic fractures or fractures during cutting of the bone because some patients may have a weak bone or osteoporotic bone when they undergo this procedure. However, this complication is very little. For knee arthroplasty, there's a two component of the knee arthroplasty. You can see there'll be a femoral component, the tibia component, and the polyethylene in between. There are many types of implant related to knee arthroplasty and the surgeon will discuss with you based on which implant you are suitable for. Again, also the choice of implant depends on the surgeon preference and training. To me, based on the current literature or practice, we consider 60 year old and above to undergo arthroplasty or totally replacement. However, this is for case-to-case -case basis. And last but not least, I want to bring the term of ready frequency or RF ablation of the nerve that supply the knee joint. What is an indication? Indication is just for pain management and then to bridge the non-operative treatment to a surgery. This is indicated for young patient which is not ready for total knee replacement or the patient don't want or refuse to undergo for any surgery. I will offer ready frequency. For example, the patient at 55 years old and indication for knee arthroplasty is 60 years old. There's a 5 years gap. Now, he refused to undergo any surgery. Then, I need to escalate my treatment modalities. That's why I offer radio frequency. What is radio frequency? Radio frequency involves ablation or cutting the nerve using laser. There are four main nerves that supply the knee joint. We will block only three above. The fibula or peroneal nerve we will not block because it will cause a paralysis. We only block the nerve, the sensory nerve that supply the knee joint. By putting a probe or needle during the procedure, you guided by the x-ray, and then we will burn the nerve. It will improve or cut off the pain nerve supply to the arthritic joint. And then the patient can continue with their normal activity daily living. And again, remember, the patient will experience the pain again at average 6 months to 1 year because the nerve will have ability to regrow. And the good about the modalities is it can improve the pain, no surgical intervention, it can buy time for the patient for definitive surgery, which is total knee replacement or knee arthroplasty. Or also indicated for a patient which is not fit to undergo surgery, but wish to have a prolonged pain relief treatment. Also, patient which is totally refused for knee arthroplasty, but they wish to have a better pain control. Then, we may offer radio frequency. Thank you. I'm going to answer a question asked in the Facebook. Okay, ankle joint formed by three bones. The first bone, tibia. Second one, fibula. And the third one, inside here, you can see talus. Ankle joint reinforced by ligaments. The first ligaments on the medial side or upper inner part called deltoid ligament. And the outer part, it is reinforced by lateral complex ligament. And then there's a joint between the tibia and fibula. It is reinforced by syndesmotic ligament. Okay, there's a one structure or we call Achilles tendon, which is formed. Part of it, the function of it to stabilize the ankle joint and to provide a motion provide a motion for the ankle. In summary, ankle joint it is formed by a few structures, bone, joints, ligaments, as well as tendon. The structure that we have discussed just now can be injured or can have a disease. So the doctors or any orthopedic surgeon will try to examine these structures, whether you have a bone problem, joint problems, ligament problems, or tendons problems. The doctor or any orthopedic surgeon will examine that particular area, then he will order investigations such as x-ray to look at the focal area, as well as he may order MRI to look the condition of the ligaments, to look the conditions of the joints or the cartilage as well as the condition of the tendon based on what information she madam that she given me she is a governed pensioner normally governed pensioner their age uh, above 60 years old so i believe she is 60 year old above so the most common problem at her age possibly number one ankle osteoarthritis number two plantar fasciitis you can see the figure and then third one achilles tendinitis you can see above so, treatment of the three problems that I mentioned earlier can be varied. But most of the time, the doctor will give you analgesia or painkiller and then they will send you for physiotherapy.
and then they may assess again your condition whether they need to go for another step of treatment for example injections of steroids or injection with prp platelet rich plasma however all condition depends on the assessment by the doctors so further information you can get from your doctors or during the consultation i hope with that explanation madam able to understand this topic today and i hope she will get an appointment to the nearest doctors to assess her condition so that she will get a better treatment and i wish madam get well soon thank you I'm going to talk about metatarsal fracture, especially fifth metatarsal fracture. Why I choose this topic? Because there's a question from our friend. She's very specific. She asked me to talk about fifth metatarsal fracture. Okay, before I start, I want to show the anatomy of the foot. This is a right foot, ankle, right ankle. This is tibia. This is fibula. Inside, there's a bone here, talus. And then, where is the metatarsal? This is metatarsal bone. First metatarsal, second metatarsal, third metatarsal, fourth metatarsal, and fifth metatarsal. Today, we are going to talk about this area fifth metatarsal area okay can you see i label the metatarsal as number one number two and number three there are three zones over the we call proximal area of the metatarsal you can see there's zone one zone two and zone three this is very important your doctor or orthopedic surgeon they will recognize this area because each zone if involved in fracture will have a certain or specific consequences you can see the zone two this zone if there's a fracture line within this zone it is called jones j-o-n-e-s jones fracture and over the zone one it is called avulsion fracture and zone three stress fracture so today we are going to talk about the zone two which is jones fracture jones fracture is very special because if it is involved in fracture and then the fracture is displaced the risk of non-union it means the bone will not unite or not healing is high why because of the blood supply there will be a disruption of the blood supply why this uh, blood supply comes from proximal area meet over the zone 2 and another blood supply comes from distal area they will meet at zone 2 called watershed area if it is fracture there will be a disruption of the blood supply which will dispose this special fracture to non-union so how do we treat before that most of the time the patient involved in inversion injury of the foot lead to fracture so how we diagnose normally diagnosis can be made by a plan radiograph or plan x-ray and then the surgeon orthopedic surgeon or doctors will locate the fracture line whether it is fall into zone one zone two or zone three if it is fall into zone two most of the orthopedic surgeon they will counsel patient to undergo surgery what type of surgery open reduction if necessary we need to open the area reduce the fracture line and then put a complete screw this is how we do compression screw okay why we need to do compression screw because you want to compress the fracture side in order to achieve healing as i mentioned earlier this type of fracture have a high risk for non-union or non-healing so again most of the doctor we recommend for surgery then the patient will ask is there any role for non-surgical intervention for john's fracture definitely we can try non-surgical or conservative management for this type of fracture with cautious so what we do we put a below need cast then we will inform the patient to avoid weight bearing with crutches support so how long it will be around six weeks with serial radiograph examination or serial x-ray examination to look for any progression of healing during the non-surgical intervention if there is a progression of healing or non-union definitely good for the patient we will off the cast at the six weeks and then allow weight bearing and he or she will go for physiotherapy to get the normal range of motion of the ankle and the foot and then after that followed by muscle strengthening and the last part of the physiotherapy or rehabilitation will be specific activity training in case there is evidence of the fracture is non-progressing or there is evidence of non-union or non-healing of the fracture side then we will advise the patient to go for operation which is compression screw fixation over the area and KIV bone grafting why we need to bone graft to increase the nutrition or blood supply to the fracture area and with the aim to stimulate healing because there are a lot of growth factor outside the bone graft and this with the hope to achieve union or complete healing over the area so in summary john's fracture high risk to get non-union the doctor will advise you to go for surgical intervention which is compression screw this is to achieve union an advantage of surgery is the patient will have a faster rehabilitation and faster return to work again non-operative or conservative treatment with casting and non-wet bearing 
Ring also have a role in Jones fracture treatment, but you must undergo close observation with serial x-ray to assess the fracture healing. In the evidence of non-healing or non-union of the fracture, the doctor may suggest for you to undergo screw fixation. And after this procedure, rehabilitation is a must. And to improve the range of motion of the ankle and foot as well as the muscle strength of the involved area. Of course, patient as average, they will return to walk or return to sports at the second month or third month after injury. Thank you. I hope this will able to help you all to understand Jones fracture. Thank you. Don't forget, please like, follow, comment and share this channel to propagate the knowledge.